Good evening, sisters and brothers, and um, welcome to this evening's evening prayer. It's uh, Thursday evening, Thursday evening. And entering into the night, of course, it gets darker earlier. And, um, and so we pray that God will keep us through the night. Of course, we bring all the concerns and the cares and uh, of, of this day to God in our prayers tonight as we sleep and seek God's peace, seek God's mercy, seek God's rest from the cares, from the troubles, from the, uh, the changes and chances of this world. So let us pray. O oh God, make speed to save us. O oh Lord, make haste to help us. Reveal among us the light of your presence, that we may behold your power and glory. Blessed are you, sovereign God, creator of light and darkness. To you be glory and praise forever. As evening falls, you renew your promise to reveal among us the light of your presence. May your word be a lantern to our feet and a light upon our path, that we may behold your coming among us. Strengthen us in our stumbling weakness and free our tongues to sing your praise. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God forever. Amen that this evening may be holy, good, and peaceful. <clears throat> Let us pray with one heart and mind. As our evening prayer rises before you, O God, so may your mercy come down upon us to cleanse our hearts and set us free to sing your praise now and forever. Amen. Surely I am coming soon. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. Behold, I am coming soon, says the Lord, and bring in my reward with me, to give everyone according to their deeds. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last, the beginning and the end. Blessed are those who do God's commandments, that they may have the right to the tree of life and may enter into the city through the gates. I, Jesus, have sent my angel to you with this testimony for all the churches. I am the root and the offspring of David. I am the bright morning star. Come, say the spirit and the bride. Come, let each hearer reply. Come forward, you who are thirsty. Let those who desire take the water of life as a gift. To the one who sits on the throne and to the Lamb, be blessing and honor and glory and might forever and ever. Amen. Surely I am coming soon. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. My soul is waiting for you, O Lord. In your word is my hope. My soul is waiting for you, O God, O Lord. In your word is my hope. There is forgiveness with you so that you shall be feared. In your word is my hope. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. My soul is waiting for you, O Lord, in your word is my hope. Lord Jesus, you are the one who is to come, the one whom we await with longing hearts. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God, my Savior. He has looked with favor on his lowly servant. 
From this day, all generations will call me blessed. The Almighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. He has mercy on those who fear him from generation to generation. He has shown strength with his arm and has scattered the proud in their conceit, casting down the mighty from their thrones and lifting up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty. He has come to the aid of his servant Israel to remember his promise of mercy, the promise made to our ancestors, to Abraham and his children forever. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. Lord Jesus, you are the one who is to come, the one whom we await with longing hearts. Amen. And our collect. Almighty God, give us grace to cast away the works of darkness and to put on the armor of light. Now in the time of this mortal life, in which your son Jesus Christ came to us in great humility, that on the last day, when he shall come again in his glorious majesty, to judge the living and the dead, we may rise to the life immortal through him who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. And our, our psalm for this evening is one of my favorite psalms, Psalm 73, Psalm 73. In the Lord God have I made my refuge. Truly, God is loving to Israel, to those who are pure in heart. Nevertheless, my feet were almost gone. My steps had well nigh slipped. For I was envious of the proud. I saw the wicked in such prosperity. For they suffer no pains, and their bodies are sleek and sound. They come to no misfortune like other folk, nor are they plagued as others are. Therefore, pride is their necklace, and violence wraps them like a cloak. Their iniquity comes from within. The conceits of their hearts overflow. They scoff and speak only of evil. They talk of oppression from on high. They set their mouth against the heavens and their tongue ranges round the earth. And so the people turn to them and find in them no fault. They say, how should God know? Is there knowledge in the most high? Behold, these are the wicked. Ever at ease, they increase their wealth. Is it in vain that I cleansed my heart and washed my hands in innocence? All day long have I been stricken and chastened every morning. If I had said, I will speak as they do, I should have betrayed the generation of your children. Then thought I to understand this, but it was too hard for me until I entered the sanctuary of God and understood the end of the wicked. How you set them in slippery places, you cast them down to destruction. How suddenly do they come to destruction, perish and come to a fearful end. As with a dream when one awakes, so, Lord, when you arise, you will despise their image. When my heart became embittered and I was pierced to the quick, I was but foolish and ignorant. I was like a brute beast in your presence, 
yet I am always with you. You hold me by my right hand. You will guide me with your counsel and afterwards receive me with glory. Whom have I in heaven but you? And there is nothing upon earth that I desire in comparison with you. Though my flesh and my heart fail me, God is the strength of my heart and my portion forever. Truly, those who forsake you will perish. You will put to silence the faithless who betray you. But it is good for me to draw near to you. In the Lord God have I made my refuge, that I may tell of all your works. In the Lord God have I made my refuge. Holy God, may we find wisdom in your presence and set our hope not on uncertain riches, but on the love that holds us to the very end. In Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. As you know, it's one of my favorite psalms because of the perspective of the psalm, the psalmist. Uh, you know, he's looking out at, 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 at a life, he's looking at humanity, and he sees the wicked prospering and the righteous suffering. It is so relevant, sisters and brothers. This psalm is a psalm for all time. <laughs> it's a, because it has always been that this the the righteous are, are are not you know righteous are poor they're suffering but the wicked they are they, you know their bodies are they, they they suffer no pain their bodies are sleek and sound they, they don't come to misfortunes like other folk and they're not plagued like others and so on and so forth and the psalmist says i try to understand this but it was beyond me in fact, he said, is it in vain that I have washed my hands? No. Is, it in is it for nothing that I do righteous deeds, that I remain righteous and, and holy and God-fearing? Is it, is it in vain that I'm doing these things? I don't seem to be getting any reward for it, God. I'm not getting any, I'm not getting any richer, and I'm certainly not getting any healthier. My health is failing uh, 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 you know, my bank account is failing, is dwindling, and yet I'm the righteous one. <laughs> Isn't this the psalm for us, sisters and brothers? Oh my goodness, that's why I love this psalm. But then he says, I went into the temple of God and I understood their end. So he goes into God's house. In a sense, he says, he, 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 in the house of God, in the presence of God, he understands that the, the, the eternity of the two people, the two groups of people, the righteous and the wicked, is very different. And so, in a sense, he's saying, uh, my, my suffering here will prove to, for, to eternal life. Who, uh, and so, I don't, so I, I don't envy the wicked anymore. Because my perspective of reality has now changed. Because now I have God's perspective. I no longer have my perspective on reality. I now see the wicked from God's point of view. And their end is going to be destruction. Whereas the righteous, yeah, I know we suffer. Yeah, I know we're poor. I know we don't have one much. But guess what? Our end is eternal life. And we will we, we will have a different kind of ending. And then he says, oh, I love it. Yet you are always with me. You hold me by my right hand. Whom have I in heaven but you? There is nothing on earth that I desire in comparison to you. Though my flesh and my heart fall may fail god is the strength of my life and my portion forever that's his sisters and brothers and it's only when we have a god perspective on reality will we be able to get to this point where we say i don't desire anything in this life except god because this life is fading this life is nothing compared to getting god and yeah 
fine, you know. All right, um, I leave it there. I, I, it's, it's, it's a psalm that I love and I meditate on, and um, I could go on, but let's move on. Uh, first, Thessal first Thessalonians chapter three. First Thessalonians chapter three. And it's all of chapter 3, yes. <clears throat> chapter 3, First Thessalonians. So when we could stand it no longer, we thought it best to be left by ourselves in Athens. We sent Timothy, who is our brother and co-worker in God's service, in spreading the gospel of Christ to strengthen and encourage you in your faith so that no one would be unsettled by these trials. For you know quite well that we are destined for them. In fact, when we were with you, uh, we kept telling you that we would be persecuted. And it turned out that way, as you well know. For this reason, when I could stand it no longer, I sent to find out about your faith. I was, I was afraid that in some way the tempter had tempted you and that our labors might have been in vain. But Timothy has just now come to us from you and has brought good news about your faith and love. He has told us that you always have pleasant memories of us and that you long to see us, just as we also long to see you. Therefore, brothers and sisters, in all our distress and persecution, we were encouraged about you because of your faith. For now we really live, since you are standing firm in the Lord. How can we thank God enough for you in return for all the joy we have in the presence of our God because of you? Night and day we pray most earnestly that we may see you again and supply what is lacking in your faith. Now may our God and Father himself and our Lord Jesus clear the way for us to come to you. May the Lord make your love increase and overflow for each other and for everyone else just as ours does for you. May he strengthen your hearts so that you will be blameless and holy in the presence of our God and Father when our Lord Jesus comes with all his holy angels. Amen. Paul has just lots of glowing things to say about these Christians in Thessalonica. He was suffering persecution, so he was prevented from going to um, to find out. If you read the book of Acts, um, uh, Paul was persecuted and thrown out of town in Thessalonica. And he, 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 he was worried, you could say, about the, the fledging church because he had started this church, but he didn't know what was happening. If they were, if they had died down or if they were continuing in the faith, he didn't know. So he sent Timothy to go and check. <laughs> Timothy went, and so Timothy has returned, and it's because Timothy has returned with such good news, glowing um, news about the Thessalonian Christians, that Paul is writing this letter. And there was one other issue, but we'll come to that later, But um, because they had some questions for Paul as well concerning death. And the second coming, and um, that's something that we'll look at in chapter four. So Paul is Paul is glad. Paul's heart is 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 rejoicing because he's he's hearing that the Thessalonian church is thriving. They have their faith is growing. Their love for each other is growing, and and amazingly, Paul just started a church and was driven out of town. He preached the gospel, and before you know, he was gone, and his, his, his concern about them 
So, you know, he started, so, you know, it's, it's, you could say it's his baby, <laughs> you know, he, he gave birth to this church, you know, and, and so he's concerned as a parent, you know, how are they, how are you guys doing and so on. And here his heart is, um, is, is rejoicing. So he said, therefore, brothers and sisters, in all that distress and persecution, we were encouraged about you because of your faith. For now we really live since you are standing firm in the Lord. Now we can live. Now we can carry on with the mission that God has given. Know that my heart is reassured that your faith is strong. That you are standing firm in the Lord. It's a great um, encouragement, sisters and brothers, for all of us. That the, the, the Christians in this community were... Were, were such a, 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 an encouragement to Paul and should be an encouragement to us as well. And so Paul prayed for them. Paul says, um, uh, earnestly, night and day we pray that we may see you again and supply what is lacking in your faith. What is lacking? There's lots of gaps in their faith because, of course, Paul was only there for a short time. So there are lots of questions they have. Paul says, I'm praying that I'll come to you and supply what is lacking in your faith. But now he prays this prayer, wonderful prayer. Now may our God and Father himself and our Lord Jesus clear the way for us to come to you. May the Lord make your love increase and overflow for each other and for everyone else, just as ours just as, we, just as our love is for you, may God strengthen your heart so that you will be blameless and holy in the presence of our God and Father when our Lord Jesus Christ returns. You know, what a prayer. May God strengthen your hearts and make you blameless and holy in the presence of God the Father when our Lord Jesus Christ returns. May that be the prayer for us tonight, sisters and brothers. May God, may God strengthen your heart that you may be blameless and holy in the presence of our God and Father when our Lord Jesus comes with all his saints. Amen. Amen. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for this encouraging letter. We thank you, Lord, uh, for the for the prayer of our, the, the Apostle Paul and for the for this the, the strength of this church, the faith, the love they have for one another and they have for you. Lord, they are a model for all of us. We pray that we will be this kind of church, this kind of people, with this love, this faith that gladdens the heart, gladdens your heart in this in the way that it gladdens the heart of Paul, to hear the progress, the growth, the, 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 the fact that these Christians were standing firm in the faith and they were not allowed, they were not allowing persecution or anything else to dampen their faith and their love for you. May we be like this, Lord, we pray. Give us grace to be very, to have this kind of love and faith exemplified in us like the Christians in Thessalonica. In Jesus' name, amen. And of course, we remember we are praying this evening for and Andy, Andy and his wife Anita and their family. So Lord, we pray for Andy and we ask, Lord, for your mercy and grace upon him, upon Anita and upon their family this evening, especially this day. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And of course, we are praying for Ingester Road in our parish. Today we finish, we finish, Jeanette and I finish all the leaflets. And so all, most houses in our parish, not every house, but most homes in our parish have received a, 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 a Christmas card from us. So we pray for Ingester Road and all those who receive Christmas cards and even those who probably didn't. We pray for them tonight. We ask, Lord, that you will penetrate 
through the closed hearts and closed doors of the people and in Jester Road with the good news of your gospel. Save them, Lord, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. And I won't go through all the lists tonight, sisters and brothers. I just want to pray a general prayer for all those who are sick. And remember, remember that we are still in this COVID time and we continue to pray. We must continue, sisters and brothers, to pray for God's deliverance. And so, Lord, in your mercy, deliver us from COVID and, and this pandemic, we pray, and variants of all sorts. Lord, we ask for your mercy. We ask for your intervention in our world, in our, in our situation, and save us from this dreaded disease that is causing so much, um, so much um, heartache and distress throughout the world. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Keep us, good Lord, under the shadow of your mercy. In this time of uncertainty and distress, sustain and support the anxious and the fearful and lift up all who are brought low, that we may rejoice in your comfort, knowing that nothing in life or death can separate us from your love in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. And so God, gracious God, give skill sympathy and resilience to all who are caring for the sick and your wisdom to those searching for a cure for diseases for cancer among all and and and, and even for this vaccine for the for this disease as well this pandemic strengthen all of these doctors scientists carers with your holy spirit that through their work Many will be restored to health through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And our night prayer. Guide us waking, O Lord, and guard us sleeping, that awake we may watch with Christ, and asleep we may rest in peace. Look down, O Lord, from your heavenly throne, and illumine this night with your celestial brightness that by day as by night your people may glorify your holy name through jesus christ our lord amen our father in heaven hallowed be your name your kingdom come your will be done on earth as in heaven give us today our daily bread forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen.
Amen. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look kindly upon you and give you peace, rest, and comfort tonight, sisters and brothers. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Have a peaceful, restful night, sisters and brothers.